Hey guys and welcome to the video today. It's Excoundrel. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you're a new subscriber and you have been watching my guides before, thank you so much for coming back. If you aren't a subscriber, please feel free to subscribe if you like the content. And before we get into the video, I do need to give a quick shout out to the channel sponsors, G2A. There is a link to the marketplace in the description below if you want to use it, feel free. Okay, so let's talk about today's video. We are going to focus on the process of pivoting and what that means and what kind of information you have to take in to be able to do it. Pivoting is something that a lot of people will say is impossible in this game and to an extent it sometimes can be. Um, sometimes you do just get locked into a composition and it's very hard to get out of it. I think that's in part due to the fact that items are so important and once you commit to certain items they just don't work on other compositions. Um, but also there are ways to pivot and there are ways to move out of a composition when you aren't working with one. Um, you know I've seen people in tournaments go really hard on pivoting and it's been it's been a huge success. So I, I kind of want to focus on pivoting and, and talk about what I do when I'm thinking about doing that. Usually I pivot about the crugs. So if I've got an idea of a composition in my head and I end up having to change that idea, I usually pivot around the time that the crugs take place. Um, so in terms of this build right now, you can see quite clearly, I think most of you will be able to see where I'm thinking of going with this particular build. As you can see, I've got a, a poppy two, two twisted fates, and two aries. My items can build into uh, bramble vest, morellonomicon, and spear of shojin. It's quite clear that this is going to be a good start for a potential poppy build. In terms of priority, I would look for the bramble vest, then the morellonomicon, and then the shojins. Um, the Shojins and Morellonomicon would be for Twisted Fate 3, and obviously the Bramble Vest would be for Poppy. I've got a good potential start for a Poppy build. So it is worth noting that this in this video, I initially thought I was going to be playing Candyland. I thought I was going to be rolling down after the Krugs at level 4 and looking for um, essentially as many Poppies as I could find. What you need to uh, sort of understand is how I, I altered my perspective on this game throughout the course of the second round. So from 2-1 all the way up to Krugs, I made a conscious decision to change the way I played based on a couple of factors. So the first factor is that my economy was a little bit behind where it should be for someone trying to play for Candyland. I would like to have 10 gold at round 2-2 most of the time. Um, it's usually a good, a good way to kickstart your economy and have 50 gold by the Krugs round. 10 gold by round 2-3 is standard, but it's usually going to leave you with a little bit less gold to roll down compared to other people playing Candyland compositions. The other thing to note is that a lot of people in this game were already trying to build poppy compositions. Now, it's not impossible to compete with other people building comp a poppy compositions, but if I see someone running a poppy or two people running poppies with Twisted Fate and Zoe, it's quite clear that that is also in their mind in terms of how they want to play this game. So competing with two people, it can be very dangerous, especially, like me, um, if you end up getting to the Krugs on a lose streak and your HP is already very low. The next thing that really, I guess, defined my decision making was this carousel. This carousel didn't offer me anything useful. I could have got a Shojins, which is of least importance. I could have got a Morellonomicon, which is less important than my poppy items. And then I ended up getting a Spatula. Um, why has this changed? Well, Spatula is not that useful for this composition. It can give me a, a force of nature if I'm very lucky, and that would be great. But Spatula is not particularly good. So my items didn't really suit uh, many compositions other than the Poppy. So what, what you need to be aware of is, is right now is I'm looking at the other players, okay? There are at least two people playing Poppy. Someone has got uh, a very high gold and is just hoarding Poppies, Zoe's, and Twisted Fates. Someone has given an Ionic Spark to Poppy, which is usually a good indication that they want to play a Poppy-centered build as well. Ionic Spark is an okay item for Poppy. So I very quickly realized I was going to be having to compete with people for this particular build. The other thing that I noticed is that out of this entire lobby, and this was Master Diamond 1 level, out of this, in, this entire lobby, no one was actually taking mechs or infiltrators. So no one was taking Kaiser, and no one was taking Annie, and no one was taking Rumble. Um, that left open a build, which is still very strong, and le if left uncontested, can be very good for your chances in the game. So my items also pivot into mech very easily. Tier is good for Seraphs, for Kaiser. Morello's is a core item for, uh, for Kaiser. I have a demo spat, you know, with the spatula already found, if I could find the needlessly large rod. And I also have a potential bramble vest for the mech. So the conscious decision that I made leading up to the Krugs was I don't have the economy to properly compete against the people really going all in on the poppy composition. My items 
are not optimal. I don't already have a Bramble Vest for Poppy. Bramble Vest or, or, or Rabadon's Death Cap is really important for Poppy early on, especially if you don't hit Poppy 3 straight away, because it's going to help you protect your HP as you're looking for Poppy 3. I also am on 76 HP. I'm the lowest HP in the lobby. If I compete and miss my Poppy 3, I'm out. I'm done. That's 8th place. You know, that's it. It's over. So obviously, I'm not in a strong position when it comes to um, when it comes to actually competing for the poppy build. So I made the decision to say, okay, right, I am going to pivot into Mech Infiltrator because I already have 40 gold. So I'm actually at a good gold value at this stage in the game. I can get, I can get very easily to level six and then and no one else is taking my units so i can probably find my three stars relatively quickly in this game if if i roll down like this guy did and i hit one or two poppies i don't have the items to support a level two poppy and if i miss at 71 hp i'm probably going to end up the end up dead before i can actually finalize my composition despite having decent items i've got items for tf and that's great but that's not going to save me the other thing that I wanted to know is that Morella Lomicon is a very, very good item when you're trying to lose streak because it can often pick you up one or two kills uh, in a situation that you probably wouldn't usually find kills in, and that's obviously a great spot to be in. So now I'm level five and I'm leveling up to level six. I'm hoarding certain mech units, no one else going mech, and essentially now is the time where we think about at what point am I going to transition into mechs? At what point am I going to say, okay, let's drop the Vanguard frontline, let's drop the Star Guardians, let's drop the two-star Twisted Fate and actually get into Mech Infiltrator. Well, first of all, I think that that should be at level six. Uh, level six brings your Mech Infiltrator composition online. It is the strongest level for your Mech Infiltrator composition in the mid game. And it's also the level that you're going to spend most of your time rolling at. So that was the first decision when it comes to pivoting into, pivoting into Mech Infiltrator. The next decision when it comes to pivoting into Mech Infiltrator is uh, at what point... Um, like at, at what point am I am I equally as strong as a double vanguard frontline? Well, probably when I find my completed mech. So once I find fizz, that's usually a good indicator that you should put your mechs on the board. If you don't find fizz, um, mech infiltrator can be very weak. So if you don't find fizz, mech infiltrator can actually be really garbage. Um, so that's something that also also to be aware of, by the way. Um, the reason I made this transition right here is that I actually had the demo spat for Kaiser, okay? So I found the demo spat for Kaiser, uh, and then I put the rumble on the board, and that allowed my Kaiser to get the demolition um, uh, synergy, which actually makes her pretty strong. That, that's kind of what makes Kaiser strong in general. And then I rolled a little bit further, and I found a Fizz. So now I have Fizz, Rumble, Annie, and I actually have a lot of my backline already sorted out as well. I have a two-star Kha'Zix. This is where I've said, let's sell everything. Let's drop in our, our, our units uh, and actually make that transition. And we find the Shaco as well, which is really, really important. So this is, this is, I made this conscious decision because I found my mech, which is a really, really strong. Even at one star, it's very strong in the mid game, especially in, in round three. So I made that, that maneuver because we'd, we'd actually you know, managed to get to a point where the transition was, was relevant. We also found the rest of our infiltrators, which is also really important. And you can see here, you know, we're, we're pretty close to a lot of really big power upgrades. A two-star Fizz and a two-star Shaco would give me a really good mid game. And now we're essentially going to be rolling almost indefinitely to find at least my two-star three costs. Sorry, two cost three stars. So what I'm looking for right now when I'm playing is... Um, especially when you're at level six, this is where you've got a higher chance of finding your, your two stars. So I'm looking for two star, um, three star um, uh, Kaiser, three star Annie, okay? If I don't find the uh, Rumble and the, and the Shaco three star, that's not a big deal because I can go to level seven where I can either add in Lux or I can add in uh, Kale for the Valkyrie bonus for my Kaiser. But really, most importantly, it is about getting my two costs to three star at this stage in the game. Now, I got, because I'm being not being contested, I got very lucky. I found a two star Fizz, a two star Rumble. I've now got a fully two star mech. I've got two star infiltrators across the board. This is perfect win streak territory for this build. I'm in such a good spot for this build right now that I don't really feel. Um, threatened to have to like rush to level seven or make any kind of impact decisions we made a good transition we made a good pivot out of the poppy build that we were intending on going usually the round three so after the krugs is about the time that most people are considering pivoting okay
Um, and I think I'm going to skip ahead a little bit in this video because for the most part, all you're seeing me do now is uh, <laughs> is roll for my three stars. So I'm going to skip to the point where I decide to go to level seven. So I go up to level seven because I found my three star Kaiser and my three star Annie. The difference between finding a two cost at six and seven is only 5%. So it's not a massive, massive um, percentage. But as you've seen from the patch notes, just a 5% adjustment here or there can massively impact how many units that you find of that particular cost. So going to level seven once I found my two, star, uh, two cost three stars is really important. Now at level seven, my my aim, my main goal is to go for my three star three costs. That's including Shaco and Rumble. No one is contesting Shaco and no one is contesting Rumble, so it shouldn't be um, completely infeasible that I find those by the end of this game. So that is what I'm doing at level seven right now. In terms of itemization, I managed to get a chain vest for the Bramble vest on my mech. I have perfect Kaiser items. Uh, in terms of red buff, I just threw it on the Shaco because realistically there the weren't many other options for me. And then I've got a now got a Gwinsu's Rage Blade. Uh, the Gwinsu's Ra Rage Blade. The reason I'm not slamming it on Kale is it's actually an okay item for your mech. That might sound really stupid, but your mech does benefit from the infiltrator bonus, and because of that, you're going to generate a lot of attack speed, and the mech actually hits pretty hard. We are starting to lose now, as you can see. Um, there are some blaster brawler compositions that we are not positioning well against. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to predict positioning at this stage in the game. If you're someone that's as good as someone like uh, Kiyun, you're probably going to be able to do it easily, but for me, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, I actually made the, make the decision to get rid of the Kale and go for the Lux. The reason I do this is because I think I prefer the Sorcerer bonus in mech uh, more so than the Valkyrie bonus, especially now the Valkyrie bonus got slightly nerfed. I just think the Sorcerer bonus gets you a little bit more impact across the board, um, and especially when it's when you have more than just your, your three-star Kaiser. So I decided that actually having the Lux in is pretty solid, and plus I really do like the CC that Lux provides. I think she's very strong. So I'm just kind of slowly looking for for units right now. Um, I do just decide to slam the Ginsu's Rage Blade on my mech. The reason I do that is I find a redemption, which is just not going to go on my mech because my mech is not designed to die early. So there's no point giving redemption to mech because it's just, it's just not going to heal anybody because by the time the mech dies, it's usually the last unit left alive. But I do give it to my Shaco because he's more likely to die um, than most others. You know, Kazik's also pretty likely to, to die, if I'm completely honest with you. So I'm pretty close to um, a lot of important three stars. The most important three star that I'm looking for in this particular scenario is my Rumble. So I am looking for my Rumble as a matter of priority. I do think that I need to level up my mech. I do think I need to get the three star Rumble to make my composition strong enough. And so therefore I'm making the conscious decision to roll down a bit more aggressively than I would do previously because I'm looking to get those completing three stars for my composition. It is important when playing mech that you do get those three stars to be able to last in the late game. You know, the ideal scenario is really finding the three star fizz, the three star um uh the three star fizz, the three star uh shako, the three star uh rumble if you can. Obviously fizz is a luxury. Not everybody's gonna get fizz every single game, but it definitely makes your mech nigh on and killable. What you are noticing is that the the, the Ginsu's Rage Blade is actually pretty pretty strong here. I do end up losing again to the Brawler Blaster ever so slightly. But you know, I've now started to find some really important three stars and I am just one Shako away and I'm a couple of fizzes away as well. What you're noticing me do here is now starting to position specifically for people that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to play against. I see that the rebel guy tries to maneuver. I move my mech directly in front of his rebels. Moving the mech directly in front of rebels is just a really good way to beat rebel players. Rebels group up by, by the very nature of their composition. So if you group up uh, your mech right in front of the rebel player, you're more likely to get a ridiculous impact mech ultimate, which is obviously going to be very strong. The rest of this game is going to be talking about me. Uh, I, I basically went for a roulette surprise here, by the way. I, I didn't really know what to go for, so I ended up just going for whatever the game gave me. Ended up giving me a jeweled gauntlet, which I gave over to the Lux, which can be, you know, I can get a good Lux ultimate off and it'd be pretty strong. So now I'm thinking about positioning against this guy. What I need to be aware of in the late game here is that there is a Jinx, a Jinx with Trap Claw. If my Kaiser uses her first ultimate right next to the Jinx, I'm just dead. Like, like I cannot allow my Kaiser to get her first ultimate on the Jinx. I either want my my Shaco or my my um, Kazix to soak that, or I want my Kaiser to, to to hit her from afar. I do not want my Kaiser to hit the the Jinx right in front of the Jinx because it, it, I'm just my Kaiser's just going to die, and that's all my damage down the drain. So what you're noticing is I'm positioning my Kaiser away from the Jinx. That might sound counterintuitive. It just means that my Kaiser doesn't immediately get focused, even though in that scenario it did. It bought me enough time to get a good ultimate off, 
um, and we end up beating this this blaster brawler player two games in a row. There was a couple of other positioning things that I should have really mentioned. I put my mech directly in front of the Cho'Gath with the QSS. I tried to make my Shaco and my Kha'Zix jump onto the MF or the Jinx in the back line to distract them while my Kaiser did his, her work. And obviously then I left my Kaiser um, to try and get some outside damage, not directly next to the Jinx. And then we ended up winning. Uh, mech Infiltrator is still really good if it's uncontested.